Good morning. Where it's morning. Afternoon. Where it's afternoon, I have a new Nautilus to show you. I'll play first. Man, that is juicy. Um, <laughs> we got we got a Adirondack spruce on top, and um, well, let me take a moment to talk about this Adirondack. Um, it's super choice. I get this from uh, Randy Lucas. This is Master Plus Grade. He calls it. Randy does a really good job with um, with grading his uh, material, and so. I usually feel very confident um, that when you grade something, it will in fact meet my criteria at that grade. And this stuff is, it's cosmetically really, really lovely. And it's just light and stiff. Um, and that means that I can get the top thin. That means that the top weighs less. And that means that the top transfers the string vibration more efficiently. That's the whole thing with top wood, light, stiff, um, because if it isn't stiff, obviously you can't get it thin enough and it'll start distorting and having problem physically distorting under the string tension. So, um, I, I love Adirondack as I've said many times. Um, and, uh, and this is, this is a neat, a neat set and it has that saturated sound that I love so much in Adirondack, Carpathian some Sitka. Anyway, just really good spruce. The back and sides are Brazilian rosewood. Um, this is, it's quartered. It's got quite a bit of, uh, of, it's sort of got some compression wood, which I think refers to the fact that it was at the bottom of the tree and sort of towards the stump section of the, of the tree. And there's some, um, there's some curls down here, but not enough to interfere with its job as a piece of wood. And it actually gives it like, it's a really beautiful set. And to me, this is, uh, this has one of the things that I love so much about Brazilian, which is the chatoyance, which is a fancy word for, well, actually there, it's a French word and there isn't really an English word that, that suits it. And, uh, so I'm not just saying that to be pretentious. Uh, it actually refers to the way that it reflects light and and um, gives a an illusion of depth um, to the wood. And um, it's almost jewel-like, like a cat eye. Um, you know that mineral? I can't remember what it is, but a cat eye. It's a kind of crystal that you look in and, and you see depth. Obviously, we're not penetrating too far with light in this but it gives the 3d quality and then um there's a whole breadth of different browns in this wood so that's its cosmetic thing that makes uh brazilian so lovely uh to look at but it also just i don't know you know it's it's a very rare commodity at this point and it's harder and harder for me to find um wood that like I'm, I'm not going to buy black market wood. So I buy all my wood from usually 
from the estates of deceased luthiers or retired luthiers, you know, the wood that they've had for a while. Um, it's becoming harder and harder to come by, and especially in good, good quality wood like this. So I don't know that I'm always going to be building with it, and there are other options that I'll move to later as that goes on. But for now, I just love building with it. It, it imparts a certain um, quality to the sound. I'm always trying to parse the psychological with the with the the real. Um, like when I know I'm playing a Brazilian rosewood guitar, I know I'm playing a Brazilian rosewood guitar, and I think that probably affects the way I feel about it, because to me it adds just this certain panache to the instrument. But I do believe that it. It also imparts a clarity to the overtones and um, a sort of eagerness to the feel of the instrument that other woods don't have, which would explain why it's been used so extensively. And it is the, the sort of like the, the gold standard for instruments. Anyway, this also has the arm bevel the rib bevel this might make my rib bevel very small um because i think that's all you need like i the i just want my the the features that this instrument have i want them to be subtle as subtle as they can be and still be effective and i think that having a big old gruesome back bevel and front bevel for that matter is unnecessary it creates structural issues that must be addressed and you're robbing yourself of top uh, material when, you're, when your armrest gets too big. So this is just enough, man, this thing just sits right in your lap and it's like super comfortable. Just, just having this, this, uh, this rib bevel right here, just, it doesn't make the instrument smaller. Well, it does make it slightly smaller, but it doesn't, it makes it feel smaller. So the thing just sits in your lap like this, but then it produces that, that big bass, you know, because it's a 15 inch guitar. So I'll play something else here. long sustain on this piece because there's a lot of space. So 22 frets, um, so you have a nice nice D at the top there. I don't know, it just makes sense to me to have it be a D instead of a C sharp. I've got the room to put the 22 frets instead of the 21, and uh, D just seems like a more universally useful uh, note to me than, than a C sharp. Okay, so you've got the third in A, but you've got the fifth and uh, in G, and you've got the, the tonic in D, these are the keys that, well, I play, in, <laughs> I play in G and D a lot, so I guess I'm doing it because I like it. Anyway, um, this guitar has a ton of power. You can play it really quite 
loud if you want to. And if you play it softly, it's sweet and it sings. Not sure what I'm doing here. Anyway, on that very weird little last noodle there, I'll say goodbye. Um, so this goes off to its new owner, and I'm sh sure they'll strike up a good friendship. Anyway, thanks for watching. And I have um, other things coming up, but I can't think of what they are right now. So thank you very much, and I'll talk to you later.